we read a few books or we write a few books and we think, oh boy, you're a, we're carried away with this idea that uh, uh, the society needs us. You've got to persist and persevere with the with recognition all the time that we're an animal being. All of these motivations, uh, this is what we're running through a lot of this stuff for, is that basically you analyze this down. What are we here for? What Basically, or what is the purpose of man? We touched on this before. And the question that was asked here was, what do you want out of life? See, this means, what do you think life is for you? But now let's say, what is life for? What is the purpose of life? Not my life. What is the purpose of life? What's the, what's, you know, the bugs, everything. See? And uh, we're kind of related in this. See? To the bugs, the animals, etc. What do you think's behind this whole play? Because the Christian presumes that life exists and that there, there is a purpose. I'm not saying that we're... Cause the mistake I think it's made is that we think of, that we're going to determine what life is going to do for us. By life, I mean... The, you know, the, the planets, the gods, the demigods, or saints in heaven, or whatever. So we like to separate ourselves to saying that uh, whoever wrote the Bible didn't write it for the uh, animals, he just wrote it for people. These suddenly became di divine animals as soon as the book was written, see? And, and uh, there was a paradise created for these divine animals, and he could eat anything he wanted to eat, you know. He, he could kill the other animals for food, or provide they had split hoofs, or something like that, you know. So there was, it gives it give the whole uh, uh, philosophic attitude of man a very uh, carnivorous, exalted position over other forms of life. But life is life. And the things that drive us, you said procreation, uh, we aren't built too much different than a monkey, you know, uh, or a dog, see, or well, a little bit different than a goat. He's, but the idea is behind this, you go back to... Uh, you go back to an origin. Where, where does it come from? Uh, microbes on the edge of the pond. See? They start to, yeah, they start to reproduce and they start to change and you get variations. This is a form of life. Is this the truth? I don't really believe that uh, life started that way. All life turn, tends toward inertia. Stars become yeah. black holes. Right. Whatever. But you see, th it's, uh, that's the, the old concept of the prelaya. Uh, it also burst forth into life. A little planetary thing can become a sun. We were talking about this the other day. Somebody's talking on TV about them going up in this spacecraft and they got a, a camera on the sun and they can they witnessed nuclear explosions. What are they talking about nuclear explosions? M meaning that whatever's going on up there is uh, uh, all, all it takes is a few atoms to keep that sun burning hotter and hotter, so to speak or at least maintaining a certain pitch of heat to stop losing its heat. How does this, this prelaya talked about in Blavatsky's, in the, I think it was in The Secret Doctrine, uh, is, is the black holes in space, and in the, in the uh, I said somewhere, the candles of time are lit, the three books of the absolute, that's what's meant, the candles of time are lit, and the, the, and the wax congeals, and, and nobody knows that they live or die, it takes so long, see. Uh, and uh, the, from the black holes in space, somewhere emerges another super atom, which when it, <laughs> when it's, uh, the, uh, that explodes again, it, it fans out and becomes a universe almost. It sucks in a universe and fans out and becomes a universe. See? When you get down to the possible purpose of life, we can uh, evaluate uh, ad infinitum forever because we're, we're microbes on a planet and we got to uh, a microscopic life form and compared to the size of the planet and these things seem to be living and dying see to uh, anticipate but there's something evident about the uh, purpose of life what is evident we can see it's evident that uh, procreation which is energy what is the trigger is it possible the possible thing is that all of this energy all this procreative energy is built up for the consumption of other entities. We eat the chicken and so on, you know, and then when we die, if, if we, they don't hide the body real quick, something eats us. But uh, uh, for what purpose? Uh, there, our maximum attainment in the visible field is a group of scientists who are able to create an atomic bomb or a nuclear bomb supposedly similar to what's going off on the sun all the time. But regardless, there's something behind this. If we're only here for procreation, we're not very damned important. You know, 
In other words, uh, uh, the animals, uh, anything can procreate, see? But taking the other extreme thing is uh, uh, spiritual life. Spiritual life says what's important is mental realization. Uh, discovery, you know, all these things they speak about. If this is true, then procreation is not important. See? It's not important at all because all that is producing energy to be eaten by another animal or destroyed in uh, the tensions of life, like murdered, uh, you know, caught in uh, the machinery in factories or whatever, automobiles, see? One thing for sure, we are not our testicles. See, I'm, tr I'm trying to tell you what I, what I experience or what I know. But see, there's, there's something behind this. In other words, what we're saying is there's a possibility that the manifest purpose of life is, is uh, not too damn important to us individually. This is, I think, is a real good, hard reasoning. That to all evidences, this, there is, this spirituality search is absolutely a rationalization. <clears throat> absolutely. See what I mean? It's a rationalization, yeah. It's evident that uh, if this is true, then where are we going? You know, there's energy being built. Where is it going? It's going into a higher form of being, the human being. And what's he doing? He's headed directly for destruction in a massive scale, and he's been doing it. He's been practicing it for the last, all through history, we've recorded where they've massacred each other. Like I said in the thing, they don't even eat the meat. You know, they're killing people and aren't eating the meat, you know. They're, they're not being put into good use. Uh, uh, but we're practicing up killing ourselves in, in, by the millions. I, when I hear words like 20 million men, and then I think of one mother missing her son in the battlefields of World War II. So you wonder what happened to him, what his last thoughts were. And then the 20 million was nothing. The Russians lost 20 million. The Allies lost uh, possibly another 20 million. And I've heard this figure of 50 million people, 50 million mostly young people. Of course, they bombed a few cities and, and, and caught a few geriatrics where they could make it on their own. See? But uh, <laughs> one thing of meaning behind it is what? That we are meaningless as regards to this total pattern of galactic absorption and regurgitation called black holes and pralaya, see? And uh, it also means that consequently that can, may not be of too much interest to us. It would be foolish for us to be concerned because we're not going to turn these black holes inside out, see? We can do certain things, but we, you know, like, uh, what was the guy, the book uh, that uh, Colin Wilson wrote, but mind parasites, you know, he was going to move the planets a little bit with mind parasites. That's a, okay, why, why are we here? Why are we here sitting here talking? This is logical, that it looks bad. <laughs> See? If we belabor ourselves with, the, with the, you know, it's primitive. We, the gods are angry. Uh, throw a few natives into the volcano so it won't burn the town down. See? And so we take, we take steps to placate uh, whatever's running the universe, we're trying to guess, always trying to guess whatever's running the universe and placate it. So that, that tremendous intelligence that's running the universe will not destroy Richard Rose in Benwood, West Virginia, but will kill all the people off in Wheeling. I get these stories about life in heaven. Oh, you know, uh, a, a sweet, a sweet uh, grandma and uh, 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 Jesus was there smiling. And what did he look like? Oh, you know what he looked like. He looked like the Aryan on the calendar. He wasn't Aryan at all, see? Uh, but nevertheless, that's their projection. They, they project stuff. And uh, whole, whole religious institutions form around uh, uh, placating instead of exploring. Uh, I'll tell you, you know, again, I said, you know, why am I here? You know, I'm here because I had an experience. And in the experience, the world didn't exist. But I can't, I don't want you to believe that. You can't beat death, but the idea is, is to know what, what's behind it, if there's anything behind and beyond it, that's all. But, but you see, the only way, the only way, the only reason I would be standing here talking to you, if I believed that this, this uh, universe was going to collapse and that's the end of me. You know one of the old Zen koans is, what, where will you be when the earth goes up in smoke? See? 
and it's 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 a good koan because uh, it's going up in smoke. And of course, you know, we're going to go in the incinerator, perhaps, or in the grave. As far as our senses go, uh, there's evidence that some people uh, have what I call experiences with common denominators, and they're the emerging. They didn't emerge in the old days because there was a taboo on medical people talking about what happened in a deathbed because they, they, for the, to comfort the survivors and also to keep from getting sued maybe for something that was said or, uh, you know, went contrary to the survivor's religion, too.